I didn't believe in love until I met you. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now for today's video, I'm doing another historical romance trope recommendation video and this one follows the specific storyline or the trope of our hero slash heroine but majority of my recs for this video is our hero who actually doesn't believe in love and who doesn't want to get married or if they do want to get married they think it's of obligation of maybe they want to produce an heir and then to have someone inherit their title or because they have a stipulation and plan for them that they have to get married but they certainly do not believe in love and they think love is for fairy tales and stories and it's definitely not for them but obviously in these romance novels they figure out just how wrong they are and how much deeply they have fallen in love with our heroine. So the first recommendation that I do have for you is from a new to me author that I haven't had the opportunity to talk more to you guys about yet simply because I'm slowly integrating her books into my videos but the first book is called No Earls Allowed by Shannon Galen and now this one was simply a delight. It's actually book two in her series called the Survivor series and basically the series entails a group of men who have been part of special missions in wars and also in like battles and like they're undercover spies basically too as well and they've seen a lot they've been through a lot and they've turned these heroes into kind of very gruff starchy characters who are sometimes really grumpy sometimes with suffering a lot of scars and to their minds and also to their bodies and you will get a grumpy character i believe if you continue with this series now no earls allowed ashley falls our female heroine who is the daughter of an earl and she has her own mind she's a very independent woman and she has her mind set on running in orphan and running it successfully simply because she's very caring for children who have been left abandoned and who will basically not survive on the streets unless she runs her orphanage properly. So she's very focused on working on her orphanage and she certainly does not think about marriage, you know, going back into society, being introduced to all these men and then having them flock to her attention. So her father actually hires our hero and our hero used to be an undercover spy slash agent and now now he is just kind of like picking this up as like a gig so he does it and he goes to the orphanage but the last thing he expects is to meet the Earl's daughter and to be completely taken back by her beauty but also he knows that he has a duty to fulfill and he is the sort of starchy grumpy stoic hero that he is and he actually comes in and he takes control over the orphanage by making sure that the boys are fed that the boys are well clothed, the boys are doing their chores, and that they're behaving like proper young gentlemen. And to much of her surprise, the heroine is also smitten with him too as well because of how he can control the situation. And obviously our hero doesn't want to believe in love because he's seen so much that it's really hard for him to admit his feelings when he realizes that he cares deeply about the Earl's daughter. The second recommendation that I do have for you is one from Nicola Davidson called The Devil's Submission and this one is for historical romance fans who want a little bit on the darker, raunchier, and a little bit more erotic side. This one is actually about our hero who's kind of like an accountant. He works for this BDSM like sex club with his two friends and since he has the brains he's expected to keep the numbers in order of the ledgers making sure that you know people are getting paid and bills are being paid off too as well but the one thing that he does crave is actually pain and he thought that when he married his wife and his intended that they felt the same way that they wanted to be a dominant and so that he can be a submissive and then what happens is that our heroine doesn't understand and doesn't really understand his needs and because of his past he also believes that he doesn't deserve love mostly because his whole childhood encompassed him being told that he was scum and that he was dirty and that he did not deserve anything that he was given and that he is just not even a proper man and he feels ashamed of himself too because of his own need. There's just a lot of things running through his mind that stops him from fully loving our heroine until he realizes that our heroine is very loyal, deeply in love with him, and will be there with every step that he takes. So the next recommendation that I do have for you is from another new to me author called Anna Bradley and this is her book called... So the next recommendation that I do have for you is from another new to me author called Anna Bradley and this is her book Much or Less a Marchioness and now this one involves our heroine and our hero who are actually betrothed but the more she thinks about it the more she doesn't want to marry 
him because she realizes that she wants someone to love her back and to actually fall in love with her and to love her for herself. And she realizes that our hero might not be able to give her what she wants, the emotional support that she wants, and the emotional feelings that come with a long marriage. And our hero, he doesn't believe in love simply because he's never really seen love kind of exist. He never really felt it before through all the ladies that he's bedded. He's been infatuated and he has definitely been, you know, satisfied with ladies. But he's never actually felt the urge to protect a woman, to want to spend more time with the woman, or he never thought much more about the woman outside of the bed. But he thought that he picked out a really good, suitable marchioness, which is someone who's prim, proper, and is willing to stay within the lines, till he realizes that the heroine is doing everything she can do to have this engagement to be broken off. And our hero is flabbergasted by this, so he is going to do whatever it takes to try to get her back. The next novel that I would like to recommend is actually one from Elizabeth Hoyt. This one is called Scandalous Desires, and this is actually part of her Maiden Lane series. Now this one involves our hero who is a pirate and I love pirates in my historical romances just because they're usually very protective even if they seem like that they are an alpha a-hole and that they seem like that they don't care about our female heroines but really they just kind of come and protect them no matter what. But anyways our hero in this novel actually does not believe in love and tender emotions because of his dark upbringing. He's been manipulated in his past and he has seen a lot of dark things that make him feel that if you have tender emotions about someone, they can use it against you and that you can lose ultimately the game of life. And so what happens is that he um, needs the help of our heroine because our heroine one day opened up her front door and realized that there was a babe in front of the front door and now she has to raise it. And then our hero comes into the picture again because he realizes that the babe was actually his own child. But obviously our female heroine is not going to let this child go because she doesn't trust him and that she thinks that he's not going to be a good father. So this is kind of like the romance where they both have to work out, you know, these caregiving duties and being forced in close proximity situations because they're both staying in the same place. And so it's up to our hero to kind of realize that he craves this tender emotions and that he can definitely care for two people in his life, which is his child and also the woman that he loves. So the next book that I would like to recommend is When the Duke Was Wicked by Lorraine Heath. And this one is for historical romance readers who want kind of like a darker story. It involves our hero who actually fell in love before, but then his wife passed away. So now he's kind of scorned from love and he doesn't believe in it anymore because he's once loved someone and now they're dead. So like there's really nobody else that he can fall in love with. And what happens is that our heroine has a lot of money. But the problem is, is that a lot of the guys that are courting her like her money. And she doesn't like that. She wants someone to care for her, to fall in love with her. And then the money is just kind of like an additional thing that will sweeten the marriage. So she actually enlists the help of our hero, who is also her childhood best friend, to help him kind of sort through the trash and to make sure that they're picking out the right person for her. But then he starts to realize that he cares more deeply about her than beyond friendship and that maybe he has a chance of falling in love again. So the next recommendation that I do have for you is from Lorraine Heath and this one is actually book number three in her series called The Lost Lords of Pembroke and this one's called Lord of Wicked Intentions and now this one was one of my favorites out of the whole series. Um, This is book number three and this whole series involves our three heirs to like this title and the evil uncle in the childhood days capture them, put them in like this jail cell and then they were put there so that they can starve and basically die. So it's a very dark and twisted prologue to the whole series but they somehow managed to escape but in order to kind of like wait it out and to not be captured again they kind of had to go to their separate ways so each of them had a very dark past and also they had a very dark upbringing because of the certain circumstances that they were being put in so needless to say our hero clearly does not believe in love and has no tender emotions for anybody because he's lived such a hard life but what happens is that our heroine is being auctioned off in a bit again and now our hero kind of steps in and 
saves her because he doesn't want her to fall into the hands of someone who is going to mistreat her and to ultimately cause her a lot of harm. And our hero actually really struggles with his emotions throughout this whole book and there's a lot of angsty parts in this novel too where he is very confused about his emotions towards our heroine and he's trying to figure it out but it's really hard for him to admit it to to himself. He definitely went through a lot because he was the younger brother of all the other brothers so he was very young when all these things happened to him so obviously he needed someone to kind of take care of him but he didn't have that person in his life so if you want an emotional read where our hero suffered a lot then this one is definitely for you so the next book recommendation that I do have for you is one from Tracy Ann Warren. This one is called At the Duke's Pleasure and it's actually book number three in her The Byrons of Brayborn series. Now this one involves our hero and heroine who have actually been betrothed since their childhood days. Like our hero is a couple years older than her but he literally picked her up from like the nursery like from the crib and he realized that this was going to be his wife in the future once they get to like a suitable marriageable age and so he his whole life knew that there was nobody else that he could marry except for her so he never really fell in love with anybody else and it's not because he didn't want to but he just like never thought of the idea of marriage having to be with love since he, clearly he never had a choice to marry someone that he could fall in love with so he's kind of like against it in a way and he also satisfies his cravings you know outside the marriage bed and also has mistresses and you know girls of the time he's a womanizer he's a playboy until he meets our heroine and our heroine is young and she it has been in love with him ever since she was like 16 because she's captivated by his beauty she likes his you know manly features she likes his personality but the thing is is that she's very unsure and very uncertain about his feelings towards her because he seems like he doesn't even want to be in the same room as her most of the times meanwhile our hero is kind of oblivious to the fact that the heroine is in love with him so he continues treating her the same way that he's always been treating her which is like kind of indifferent until he realizes that our heroine is doing a lot of crazy wacky things to try to get his attention and also to break off the proposal. Her father forbids it for her breaking off the proposal so now she has to make him break off the proposal so she does a lot of these crazy wacky things like I just mentioned and he is amused by it. He loves watching her kind of fool around with everything but he also realizes that he really cares for her and that he doesn't want to let her go. So the last book that I want to recommend is actually one that I'm in the middle of reading right now but it follows the trope perfectly. This one's called How to Catch a Wicked Viscount by Amy Rose Bennett and now this one involves a brother's best friend romance trope. Our heroine is in love with her best friend's older brother but obviously she you know she won't get his attention at all because she's kind of like a plain Jane and also because she kind of flunked out of like this lady school like the school that trains girls to become ladies and so she has ruined her reputation because she got kicked out along with her three other friends including her best friend who has the older brother that she likes and now she is entering to society but she needs the help of her best friend and also the older brother so that she can be properly introduced and that she can have many men kind of come to her and ask her for her hand in marriage but what happens is that our hero is taken aback by how beautiful she's grown and kind of like the woman that she is now and he accidentally compromises her in like the situation and now the best friend is forcing the older brother to help her find a suitable husband but he doesn't want to do that because he has these unfamiliar feelings inside him where he has like the urge to protect her and to make sure that she has a fall into harm's way but he doesn't know what those emotions are and he knows for a fact that he does not believe in love and he never wants to get married. But anyways that is it for all the recommendations that I have for our hero who doesn't believe in love but realizes that they are in love and that they have fallen in love already with our female heroine and now that they can't live without them. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys again next time with a new one. Bye!